Hey, Robbie Lockman here with Harness, and today we're going to be going through a platform as a service example. More specifically, we're going to be leveraging Pivotal Cloud Foundry, aka PCF. There are a few moving pieces for this blog in this example, so don't worry, the moving pieces are easy to get. The first thing is, you need to have a Pivotal Cloud Foundry or a Cloud Foundry endpoint. If you don't have one, Pivotal actually has Pivotal Web Services, and everything we're going to be doing in this lab this actually qualifies for the free tier. So uh, the organization and the space that you have, uh, free up to two gigabytes, is more than enough for this particular lab. Uh, the other couple pieces that we need is a Harness account. So if you don't have a Harness account, you can sign up for one, and I'll be using the, our free edition, the community edition. And the only other piece that I leverage uh, to install a Harness delegate is that I leverage EC, Amazon Web Services EC2. Here I spun up a CentOS AMI. Now, if you don't have access to this, if you have, let's say, on your local machine, um, a qualified Linux distribution that we support, uh, you should be able to use that too. Uh, the only caveat is that you need to have communication or bi-directional communication uh, to the Harness platform. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Going back to our Pivotal Web Services console, uh, the first thing you do when you sign up for a Pivotal Web Services account, other than your credentials, is actually you create an organization uh, now, here I have already, since we're leveraging my account, I already have an organization called Captain Canary. And also, I'll be using the default space here, which is just called development. Now, once, that, once that's out of the way, uh, now it's time to start wiring a harness delegate. So if you go to the harness platform and go to setup, if we look at, we scroll down to harness delegates, here I don't have a delegate, but we can easily install a delegate. So what I'm going to be doing is logging into my CentOS instance. Uh, and then copying a, a particular command from download delegate. And then I'm going to be copying the shell script command. So with the command made, let's take a look where we are. So I'm in the home folder, in the CentOS folder. Let's go ahead and make a little directory uh, called harness. And let's cd into harness. And now we can actually paste the command that we just copied. And we can run this. Once we run the command, we've actually downloaded the assets that we need. Uh, we can take a look at it. So the next step that we have to do is actually untar that. So we'll go ahead and pass in uh, a tar command, so a tar xvf on that particular file. And here we have downloaded or actually untarred what we need. So if we go back and take a look at it, let's go ahead and cd into the harness delegate folder and we should have access to start the sh. So we'll go ahead and run uh, start the X sh. Uh, this will take a few moments to get started and download the dependencies that we need. Uh, now, no need to worry about U limit here. Um, since there's just gonna be us or you in the example, uh, U limit, um, it's uh, 1024 should be more than sufficient. So we'll give this a few seconds. Just waiting on the delegate to get started. Once that's complete, we actually go back to our Harness web UI. And this might take a few moments to come back up and be registered with Harness, but should be in no time. Perfect. And now our Harness delegate is wired from our EC2 instance. The next couple steps, we're actually going to be focusing a little bit more on the Cloud Foundry pieces. So what we're going to be doing is on my local machine, making sure that I have the Cloud Foundry CLI installed, and then going about the, getting the steps to getting the Cloud Foundry CLI or the Pivotal Cloud Foundry CLI uh, installed on the Delegate machine. Now I'm back on my local machine. Uh, just for, for help's sake, uh, I'm, I'll go ahead and install the uh, CF CLI on your local machine. This is a quick way to double check that if you need to run direct uh, Cloud Foundry commands uh, to your, your Pivotal Web Services, uh, you can do it directly from your machine. And so to install it on your machine, um, I'm using Homebrew here. So brew install Cloud Foundry tap CFCLI. Uh, I already have this installed on my machine, but let's go ahead and run it again to see if there's any updates. Uh, so there's no updates for me. Uh, to validate that the install has went correctly, um, you can also run CF tick help on your local machine. Uh, this should give um, some help functions uh, for the plugin, so this looks great. Uh, the last step to wire this um, is actually to do a CF login. So that looks like CF login, uh, the application URL or the API URL, username, password, the org, and the space. Um, if we go back to our 
uh, Pivotal Web Services console. If you go to Tools here, uh, this should give us what the actual API endpoint is. So I'm going to go ahead and log in and wire this up and then validate that what we've logged in successfully. So back on our delegate machine, or aka the EC2 instance, uh, we actually don't have access uh, to the Cloud Foundry command. So a great way to get items installed in your delegates and then make sure they have uniformity across your delegates is actually a delegate profile. So if we go back to the Harness platform and we go back to set up a Harness delegates so as we're already here, uh, we can actually create a new delegate profile. So let's go ahead and make a new delegate profile uh, to install the Cloud Foundry CLI. So if you click on Manage Delegate Profile, Add Delegate Profile, uh, let's go ahead and just call this uh, CF CLI Install. I go ahead and put the startup ship in there. Now, for my version, my AMI that uh, from from Amazon with CentOS, uh, it needs a few things, uh, and so I need to get wget. Um, since I'm going to uh, add do wget to add the CLI repo um, on my CentOS image, uh, and then also uh, making sure that that's in place, and then also just go ahead and installing it. So we're going to click submit. Create successfully. Uh, let's go ahead and run that. So if we come back to profile and click CLI install. Uh, click confirm. Uh, this might take a few moments to run, so let's wait for a couple moments. Great, looks like our Cloud Foundry CLI has been installed correctly. Uh, we can validate by going back to the the remote delegate. Uh, we can just on our remote delegate, we can just do a CF take help like we did on our local machine, and perfect, we have access to the plugin. So the next step that we need to do is actually start wiring uh, PCF as cloud infrastructure, and let's go ahead and start doing that now. Uh, to wire up our PCF infrastructure, let's go ahead and go to Setup, Cloud Providers, add a new Cloud Provider. And the Cloud Provider we're going to be adding is a Pivotal Cloud Foundry Cloud Provider. Let's just go ahead and call this PCF. Uh, now, if we go back to our console again, and to take a look at the API endpoints, if you go back to the tool section, we see it's do not use API.run.pivotal.io. Uh, let's go ahead and add that in. Um, I'll go ahead and add in my username and password here. Uh, go ahead and click test. Perfect. Click submit. And we now have our PCF endpoint. Uh, now that we have our PCF infrastructure wired in, uh, let's go ahead and start deploying something. Now, for my example, I'll be using the Tomcat project sample application. Here we can download a war. And with the war, this is pretty cool. We can actually see the Pivotal build packs or Pivotal Cloud Foundry build packs in action. Now, to serve up this war to make it look more realistic, uh, let's actually go ahead and put this in an artifact repository. Um, the artifact repository that I'm using is JFrog's Artifactory. But if you don't have one, uh, we can actually go through the steps of installing one. And we can actually install it back on of our, uh, our delegate machine. Um, since JFrog has an OSS version or open source version of the of Artifactory, uh, we can leverage that. So let's go ahead and get that wired up. If you go back to our delegate profile, we can actually make a new delegate profile. And so let's call this one Install Artifactory. To install Artifactory, it should be pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll install OpenJDK. Uh, and then by leveraging the Artifactory YUM repo, we can go ahead and get this all set up. Similar fashion, using a delegate profile, how do we install the CFCLI? Uh, we can go ahead and get install the Artifactory distribution. Let's go ahead and click Submit and wait for this to run by clicking on Install Artifactory. So this might take a few moments. Great, looks like Artifactory has been installed. Uh, now to fire up Artifactory, we need to actually access it over our public IP. So to get that, we can go back to our EC2 instance. Uh, here I have a public IP of 100.26.33.58. Um, Artifactory has a uh, serving over port 8081. Go to the web context Artifactory. And perfect, we're live and cooking. Uh, the default username is Advan, and the default password is password. Uh, let's go ahead and get set up a generic repo in Artifactory. 
uh, to host our WAR file. Once we click through the help splash screen, if we go to the left navigation and click on uh, admin, uh, let's make a new repository. Uh, let's make a local repository. Uh, and so we'll make a new one. Uh, let's make a type of generic. Uh, let's go ahead and call this Robbie Generic. And that's pretty much it. Uh, we can click Save and Finish. And we have successfully added our repository. If we navigate back to Artifacts and go back to Robbie Generic, let's go ahead and click on Deploy and deploy a particular file uh, to Robbie Generic, which will be our sample war. Let's go ahead and upload sample war and click deploy. Great, now we have access to our sample war. Since we have our artifact in a artifactory instance, let's go ahead and wire up the artifactory instance to harness. We have access to it. So if we go to setup and we go to connectors, let's go ahead and add, a, a, add an artifact server. So let's go ahead and add a new artifactory server. Let's go ahead and call this my artifactory. And go ahead and give the URL that we had before. And I'm gonna go ahead and wire in our username and password, which is admin and password. Go ahead and click test. Ah, perfect, click submit. And now we have access to our artifact repo. Awesome. With all of those wiring steps out of the way, now it's time for the fun. Let's go ahead and start building our PCF deployment and our PCF applications. So if you go back to setup and add an application, let's go ahead and add an application and call this PCF Perfection. So we're brought to the, the application screen. And so there's a few things that the wire up, uh, the service, a workflow, an environment, and a pipeline. Let's go ahead and get those all set up. The first thing is, let's create a harness service. Since we don't have any services, let's add a service. And let's go ahead and call this particular service MyPCF. Our deployment type will be Pivotal Cloud Foundry. So the first thing we need to do is add an artifact source. So since we're coming from Artifactory, our source server is my artifactory. The repository is Robbie Generic. And then what we're going to be downloading, since it's on the root, will be sample.war. Click submit. Perfect. The next item we need is an environment. So let's go ahead and add that. So click on an environment. Since we don't have any environments, let's go ahead and add an environment. Let's go ahead and call our environment staging and make this a non-production environment. Click submit. And so the next step we need to do once we create an environment, is actually add an infrastructure definition. Let's go ahead and add that. Let's go ahead and call this Pivotal Web Services since that's where we're hosting it. And the cloud provider type will be Pivotal Cloud Foundry. And our deployment type will be a Pivotal Cloud Foundry. The common time. We'll go ahead and pick our PCF cloud provider, which we wired before. And then we're going to be in the Captain Canary organization. And then we're going to go ahead and put that in our default space. At this point, it's development. Go ahead and click submit. Perfect. Now with the environment out of the way, the next thing we need to add is a harness workflow. Let's go ahead and create one right now. Let's go ahead and call this workflow PCF Perfection. We're going to make a basic deployment. We're going to deploy this to our staging environment. We're going to deploy this to our my PCF service, which is our sample.war. And then we're going to use our Pivotal Web Services infrastructure definition where we're going to deploy to. Click Submit. Perfect. That's ready for us now. If we scroll down, there is one step that we still have to complete, which is incomplete step. Uh, since this is a basic deployment, we're going to have to be configuring our app resize step. Uh, to make it simple, we're going to have our desired instance count be 100%. Click Submit. 
And now with that, our workflow is complete. Looks great. Lastly, let's go ahead and wrap this in a particular pipeline. So click on pipeline. Since we don't have any, click on add pipelines. And we'll call this pipeline simple PCF. We're going to go ahead and add one pipeline stage. Let's just call it go for gold. We're going to execute our workflow we just created, which is PCS perfection. And click submit. Great. Now it is time to finally run our PCF deployment. If you click on continuous deployment and start new deployment, let's go ahead and run it. Let's run our PCF perfection application. Let's go ahead and run our simple PCF pipeline. Let's select the version of the war. Since we don't have any versions here, we're just going to use the sample war, which is in our generic repository. And let's say, woo! You don't want to be blasting everyone with notifications. Click submit. And let's watch the magic. This should be kicking off for us here. Should be going to our deployment here in a few steps. Great. We can also go back to our console and see that something else has been added. Go to Captain Canary. There's a deployment happening. We can watch the harness UI to see when this will be completed. Bring up the console. We can also run CF apps to see that an application has become to become started. Let's see here. Looks like our deployment was successful. Let's take a look here in our UI. Ah, excellent. We have a running application. Lastly, we can click at the, on the route that was generated for us. And just like that, there's our running Tomcat sample application. So what did we learn today? We learned how to, one, leverage PCF or Cloud Foundry in our continuous deployment pipeline. We wired it up to Harness, created a basic workflow, pulled an artifact from Artifactory, and deployed it across our infrastructure. Wow, talk about a tall order. But with Harness, we made that very simple. Hopefully, with this, you can see that the, the power of the Harness platform. And certainly, if you don't have a Harness account, feel free to sign up for one. And with that, bid you good day, Robbie.